Guy, you, you went around and found uh, interviewee descendants of those who were in the Eighth Judicial Circuit, whom Lincoln rubbed up against and were friends with or uh, opponents of. Uh, and what did you learn from them? Uh, how valuable were they? And how, how much can we trust memory, you know, oral family history? I, I'm probably not enough of a scholar to discount oral history as much as some scholars do, but I basically believe in it. And, and it's, I believe in it for two reasons. <clears throat> Number one is maybe there's a grain of truth in it, but more important is the, the living presence of Lincoln that these reminiscences represent. And it's the fact, I don't care if they're exaggerated or not, that's, that's a life that Lincoln continues to have in central Illinois through these people because <clears throat> it's amazing how many contemporaries have descendants. And I keep running into him. I, uh, Burlingame, I think, has been allowed to have an electronic book, so he keeps his book going because he keeps coming across stuff. Well, that's true with these interviews. I had one yesterday at a book signing here in Chicago where Melissa Goins, this woman that Lincoln defended because she killed her husband, her great-granddaughter came up to me at a book <laughs> signing. I was just thrilled to meet this woman. I wanted to hug her, you know, because that's one of the great Lincoln stories. So that, there is a real presence of Lincoln. He's still alive in Central Illinois because of these people. I, I think there's a lesson in how they remember the war, too. Right. I mean, even uh, you, you have a veteran writing 30 years later, or even one of his grandchildren comes and tells you a story of him. There's value in that in that story. And I think you can't just dismiss it out of hand, right, I, I, think, I think, because it creates that reality. You know, we, we here in the shop, we have so many historical artifacts come through. And we have to be so careful with oral history and what the family believes this artifact is. Because I find way too many times it just ain't true. Uh, That's a and, little different issue, though. Yeah. Yes, it is. Because you're, you're valuing that artifact, which makes it a little, you need more credibility than we do in evaluating a story, which is another version of Lincoln or of the guys yeah. in the war. There there's, has to be a balance. You can't, possibly. yeah, when you write, you know, I, I, I'm always careful to kind of say this is the way it was remembered, right. you know, and, or, or hint that uh, this is this is right. how it, how it was, so Sometimes that the people can make a value of it. I think there's value in that, though. See, I was just going to say, I think there is too, because that you know who wins the war is how we're talking about it today, perhaps. Well, and, and that memory of the war is how we react on it, right? In many right. ways, in our, you know, we have this scholarship today, and I have a good friend, Kent Graham, who who argues that. It's some sort of a sin how much we enjoy the Civil War <laughs> because it was such a horrible event. <laughs> yeah, people have said that. Um, how did, let's, let's get to McClellan for a moment because he's in both your stories. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Always a good topic, McClellan. Uh, we with, can't swing with, each other. Good, yeah. 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 I told him, defensive mode. <laughs> I know. Mr. <laughs> Slack and I told him I'm glad this is not the George B. McClellan bookshop. That, that, <laughs> the, right, the right side won. Uh, so tell us, how did the uh, the Iron Brigade they loved him. They loved feel him. about they him, loved even him. when he was yeah, they, uh, they, helping Pope and his uh, yeah, anymore? They loved him, I think, because McClellan fed him that, and you know it was us against the, the government, the poor soldier who's on the line taking all the bullets, mm -hmm. uh, while some politician is changing. So they they loved they they tended to love McClellan. And we were having a discussion before. I said, well, what did McClellan ever, you know, he's a great organizer. I, I think he did three things. He, he created the Army of the Potomac, and it was an army that would withstood his firing twice and, and it survived all those battles. The second thing that he did was, I think, that uh, in that period between Bull, Second Bull Run and, and Antietam, he brought the armies together, reestablished them, and put them on the road. I don't think any general north or south could have done that in the three, four days that he had to do it. And the third thing is, is when he was fired, he walked away because there was all this pressure. Uh, in the Iron Brigade, all of the line officers, those are the guys that actually do the fighting, turned in their resignations the night he was fired. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Lysander Cutler, who was the division commander, came in and begged him to take him back. He said, if you quit, you know, the, the country is lost. He said, it's over. And so they argued all night, and finally they agreed to withdraw because they said that the war wasn't about McClellan anymore. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's that period when they kind of shifted. It suddenly wasn't McClellan's war or McClellan's army. It was suddenly a national army. Mm -hmm. And do you think that was 
the armed brigade was symptomatic of the entire army. I think Northern I think army pretty much. Yeah, well, you know, this, they, they, you, he, when you write when you read the letters, you read all these things. They said, oh, this regiment threw down its muskets and said they would not fight. And McClellan rode through camp, and generals are yelling, at him, "Take us to Washington! Take us to Washington!" And he doesn't hear any of that. He backs away from that. And I think, to his credit, he should be recognized. Because, you know, it's one of those turning points. The, the president is the president commander in chief. McClellan here, a trained soldier. Here you got this bumpkin from Illinois, right? Who, Careful. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a Lincoln man, yeah, too. I okay? I'm not in the driving for, I mean, <laughs> And McClellan, McClellan didn't, didn't think Lincoln was worthy of being president. Well, Guy, tell us about, uh, you know, he was in, on the board of the Illinois Central Railroad. And uh, when Lincoln became a, a lawyer for them, uh, and they came up against each other. Yeah, that's, a, that's fascinating. That's one of the things that was not known to me until I got into this book. Uh, Lincoln represented the Illinois Central Railroad, and McClellan was the end's chief engineer, and then vi the, the vice president in charge of construction. And there, were a lot, there was a lot of litigation against the railroad, so Lincoln, being the lawyer, had to bring in the engineer. So, um, McClellan came down to the circuit to DeWitt County and they spent time together. And uh, the arrogance displayed that we all know about by McClellan toward Lincoln is so apparent from out of McClellan's own mouth about his opinion of Lincoln from that time on the circuit. He talks about him sitting around with his coarse, rude friends telling coarse, d dirty jokes, or coarse jokes from his insipid lips. I mean, the stuff he says about Lincoln writes to his wife from Clinton about the experience of the guy that's on the same side in the litigation with him. It's just very interesting, the total contempt that he had for Lincoln before the war. And what I love about Abraham Lincoln is his magnanimity, and we see this repeatedly. He needed McClellan to reorganize that army after Bull Run. And here he has his history with him where this guy is treated him with total contempt. But what does he do? This great man puts that all aside and uses McClellan to reorganize his army. So he doesn't, he doesn't carry a grudge. And we see that repeatedly. Leonard Sweat, his partner on the, or not partner literally, but his, one of his comrades, one of my favorite characters on the circuit, Sweat said Lincoln was, a, was, quote, a very poor hater. And that's demonstrated repeatedly. And his relationship with McClellan is all of that. And uh, so, Edwin Stanton but he was, a, well. but he was a very, but he was a very shrewd politician, and he waited till after the congressional elections to fire. Oh, McClellan. sure. No, that's right. No, no question about it. Yeah, but, same uh, thing. Uh, but, but, but on the other hand, he let emancipation come out early before elections. Yes. So right. he, yes. Uh, yeah, he had which was not true. To do that. It's what, funny. Thank what you, I, Dan. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> What I found when I was reading about about Lincoln, how much they hated the man, a lot of soldiers didn't like the Emancipation Proclamation, and how it grew on them as as time went on. You saw that in the Iron Brigade. Yeah, wow. and they, they 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 this, you know, at first they were against it, and then they thought, well, if slavery ends, the war ends, we can end the war, and then later, you know, when they're fifty and sixty, they had they come to this awakening. Was the war worth it all? Mm -hmm. You know, all the the suffering and the deaths and. You know, the Confederates are back in Congress, uh, things were not going well, uh, these guys are feeling some pains, and then they began to ask that quite, was it all worth it? And w the, what happened is they, be, they accepted the losses and the destruction of the war because it ended slavery. Wow. They felt they were part of a great movement to end slavery. Was there, by the way, at war's end, I was curious about this, when you're talking about some of the ailments that they all had, and missing an arm, for instance, uh, if that's an ailment. Um, post-traumatic syndrome is something we hear yes. about today. Right. Yes, there must have been some of that in the Civil War. Oh yeah. <laughs> Did you see that in, in they call it the so, in, yeah, I, I deal with it in the memory section after the war. They call it soldier's heart, mm -hmm. uh, which was wow. melancholy or, or, or stress from the war. And a classic example of this is Rufus Dawes. You know, he he gets elected to Congress in eight, in the eighteen eighties. He he loses the, after one term. Before he comes home, he goes to the Arlington Cemetery, he spends two days finding the graves of all the soldiers who kill, were killed under his command. Mm. Wow. And writes this long letter. He said, he said I had to look for him. And then, and then he goes home. And right after that, he suffers a big emotional uh, collapse, and, uh, and he dies young. He's working on his book. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Uh, 
uh, you, you find it you find it all you know scattered through that. And I, I talk about it a little in the book and, and write about it, but it was all there. It the war changed these guys in so many ways. They didn't even know. You know, they came home to an uncertain future, right? You know, they come home to their family. And the older brother is sitting in their chair in the kitchen, right? And the, or the parents are dead. Everybody's, you know, how do you, how do you put that into a place? Um, I forgot what my next question was. So I'm going to go to this one that came in for you, Guy. Um, That's a big, long one. It's a long one. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can make a long answer, too. <laughs> Don't forget to put your name in so I can say who you are. Uh, do you have any thoughts on the site in Macomb County, Illinois, where Lincoln lived for one year yet? And then talk, he or she talks about some of the life-changing things that happened there. Almost died of starvation, malaria, uh, the great winter there, he split logs. Uh, but it's one of the least visited sites. So uh, maybe a turning point, he or she thinks, in his life was, was that time in Macomb. What's, what is your take? Yeah, that's a very good question, and it's a perceptive question, and it's probably from somebody from Macon County, I suspect. <laughs> but, but the fact is, it is true. We all know about New Salem. We all know how transformative New Salem was for Lincoln. But that year, in I was amazed when I started on this on this subject as well. It's one of the things I found that I didn't know. That year in Macon County was very important, and we see the same things happening there that we all know about because of New Salem his leadership, his, his going out and finding already the most important people in that little county at that time. There was Lincoln hustling to make a relationship with William Warnick, for example, who was the sheriff and the most popular politician. And he, he worked for him in, as a farmhand. But at the same time, he's giving speeches. Now imagine going into Lincoln's, working in a field, and, and some Democrats are giving a speech in what is now Lincoln Square. And Lincoln drops down his scythe and goes over and rebuts uh, William Ewing, who was uh, the leading Democrat, longtime nemesis. He was the Speaker of the House that Lincoln always lost to because the Democrats had the majority. But uh, it's amazing. Here's this callow youth that gets up and takes on the biggest Democrat, one of the biggest Democrats in the state. So yeah, Decatur was extremely important. And you take the square in Decatur. Uh, called Lincoln Square. There is more Lincoln history per square inch in that square than I think anywhere in the state. It's like, and I, I don't have 15 minutes to tell you all about it, but the courthouse was there. His family slept their first night on the ground there. But the, uh, the sad thing is, you go there and there's no sense of it in that. And uh, as folks in Macon County know, that home, that they built or recreated the cabin. Mm -hmm. And arson, arson, it was burned down by arsons. So now it's a pretty park on the banks of the Sangamon, but there's nothing there to really give you the sense of Lincoln other than you know he was there. So I hope the county someday figures a way, or the state, to replace that site and rebuild that. That'd be great.